I'm Ruth, 36 years old. Six years ago, I married Tim, who's a year older than me. We live with our four-year-old son, Jacob. Our lives changed when Jacob was born, but we were happy. Tim was great with our son, and Jacob really enjoyed his time with his dad. Watching them, I felt so content. I always thought this peaceful happiness would last forever. But then, everything changed unexpectedly. One day, Tim came home and said, I'm thinking of getting back with Sally. I want a divorce. Divorce? Getting back together? I was completely shocked. Sally, I remember that name. Ah, oh, she's Tim's ex-girlfriend before he was with me. I'm not asking for a divorce right away. I know this is sudden and you must be panicked. I'll give you time, especially because of Jacob. I'll definitely pay child support, so don't worry about money. The rest is up to you. After saying that, he just went to take a bath. I can believe he had been cheating. Why a divorce when he loves her son so much? Confused, I confronted him after his bath. Hey, you're joking, right? It's not April Fool's Day. Is this some kind of prank? I asked him cheerfully, but he replied without changing his expression. I wouldn't joke about this. I'm not expecting you to accept it right away. I said I'd give you time, but I was devastated. I couldn't accept this reality. All our happy moments flashed before my eyes, and I started crying. This, this is so cruel. So cruel. He then sighed heavily and looked at me with an expression I had never seen before. He said, What then? Are you saying we should stay married even though we don't love each other? Do you think that's best for Jacob? Do you think it's okay to lie to him? I, I thought we were in love. Tim rarely raised his voice, but now he was shouting. This is reality. A reality I have to accept. But it's not easy to come to terms with. I still love him. And thinking of Jacob... I don't want a divorce. Do you think it's okay to lie to Jacob? That question from him stuck with me. I don't want to lie to my son, but the idea of being a single mother and providing for Jacob without any struggle was daunting. I spent several days feeling depressed. Then I got a call from my friend Lisa, who had moved away after getting married. We weren't in touch much after our children were born although we were close enough to attend each other's weddings. She told me, I'm getting a divorce. I'm moving back, so let's meet up. Her tone was surprisingly cheerful for such shocking news. Here I was, struggling with the idea of divorce, and she seemed so upbeat about it. I immediately agreed to meet her. When we met, she looked a bit worn out, but her straightforward manner hadn't changed. After hearing my story, she immediately criticized Tim. Just leave him! But it's not that easy. There's Jacob too. Over time, my dislike for Tim had grown, but I was only concerned about Jacob. That's it right there! Lisa pointed out. She continued. You're worried about Jacob, right? I felt the same way. Worried about him having just one parent, financial issues, life in general. That's why it took me so long to decide on a divorce. Exactly. But think about it. Do you really want a cheating man to be your precious son's father? He's neglecting his family for another woman. No matter how good a father he is in front of Jacob, I can't believe he truly cares about him. If he did, he wouldn't betray his family. Her words resonated with me. It was as if a fog had lifted and I found my answer. I decided to get a divorce. Seeing the change in my expression, she continued. Can't you rely on your parents? I plan to lean on mine for a while. 
they're happy to live with their grandchild. If their child is in trouble, they'll want to help, no matter their age. That struck me. I have been so overwhelmed by vague fears that I hadn't thought of asking anyone for help. You're right. I'll talk to my parents, I said as we parted ways. Talking to Lisa had lightened my mood, and I was able to smile more at Jacob that day. Recently, I had been gloomy, and he often looked worriedly at my face. Looking at his sleeping face, I thought, "Divorce isn't scary." I decided to talk to Tim about it when he got home. Hey, about that thing we discussed the other day, I started, but he just scratched his head and said, "Did I say something before?" Seriously, he forgot. I can't believe it. I've been agonizing over this for a month, and he just forgets like it's nothing. Annoyed, I blurted out, "The divorce. I agree to it. Just make sure you pay child support." I stared at him seriously, but his response was shocking. Oh, that. Forget it. I've changed my mind again. We're not getting divorced. Let's stay married. What? I couldn't help but raise my voice in disbelief. What do you mean? I broke up with Sally, so we don't need to get a divorce anymore. Let's stay married. Jacob needs a father, right? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, and this weekend I'll take us to the zoo. I haven't done much for him lately, and I should act like a father once in a while. His laughter, without a hint of guilt, angered me. He might care about our son, but he clearly doesn't care about my feelings. Cheating, then casually mentioning divorce, and now he's not divorcing because he broke up with her. How convenient for him! I was furious. I can forgive him. I felt foolish for ever thinking of staying with such a man. I was more determined than ever to divorce him. As I stayed silent, Tim leisurely watched TV as if the matter was settled. My anger was boiling over. I had gathered enough evidence of his affair, given he didn't even try to hide it. But before taking legal action, I wanted to confirm one thing. Whether Sally knew Tim was married when they got involved, if she didn't know, I could possibly collaborate with her to sue him. Initially reluctant, Sally agreed to meet after I mentioned alimony. In a carefree tone, she said, "Did I know he was married? Of course, he's my ex. I would obviously hear about his marriage, so she knew." Then why did you break up with him? She laughed dismissively. It got too messy. All the drama. It was just a fling for me. But when he started talking about marrying me, I broke it off. Who would marry such an ordinary man? Tell him to come back when he's earning more. I can believe her nerve, unapologetic and placing herself above the situation. I was furious with her too. Come back when he's earning more? Who the hell does she think she is? Unforgivable! I raised my voice. I'm suing you and him for alimony. I have all the evidence of the affair. She looked down on me, saying, "Do whatever you want. I won't pay a dime." Tim said he'd cover it. Her audacity was unbelievable, planning to let him pay the alimony for her actions. Moreover, it's not just his money; it's our family's money. This would mean no harm to her, only loss to me. I was livid with Tim for making such a promise. You won't get away with this. That's our family's money. It's not for Tim to freely spend on your alimony. She banged on the table and shouted, "That's not what we agreed on." I stood my ground. I don't care about your agreement. 
What you did destroyed a family. You think you can do that and remain unscathed? I'll make sure you pay tens of thousands of dollars. I'll drag both of you down. Her bravado faded at my words. Tens of thousands? Wait, I can't. I don't have that kind of money. Please, I beg you, let it go. But her pleading was in vain. Still, she grabbed my arm tightly, desperate. Then an idea struck me. All right, if you help me sue Tim, I'll consider it. Huh? She was stunned. Sue him? How? Claim he deceived you. That way, you can get alimony from him. She frowned, puzzled. But you just said you wouldn't let him use the family money. Wouldn't suing him be the same? If you agree to sue him, I'll go through with the divorce. Then it's no longer family money, and we can punish him. Let's both hit him where it hurts. Hesitantly, she asked, "And you'll forgive me if we do that?" I smiled silently. That night, I told Tim it was over. Regardless of Sally's situation, I had intended to divorce him, and the divorce papers were ready. When I presented them, he raised his voice in disbelief. "Why? I said we're not getting divorced. After I've decided to keep our family together, you're still holding on a grudge over a single affair? Are you really going to take Jacob's father away from him just because you're stubborn?" I calmly responded, "One affair is more than enough. If you truly cared about our family, you wouldn't have cheated in the first place. Don't use Jacob's name to justify your actions. And thanks to your candid confession, I have all the evidence I need for the affair. I will definitely get alimony and child support." Seeing my resolve, he suddenly started pleading pathetically. Wait, let's talk about this. Think about Jacob's future. Don't take divorce lightly, okay? Take divorce lightly? How dare he? After all the anguish I've gone through, I can contain my anger any longer and raise my voice. Take it lightly? You've got to be kidding me! Who was the one who first mentioned divorce? You. You neglected me and Jacob for your affair, and even brought up divorce when you got serious with her. All of this is your fault. Don't make it sound like I'm the one to blame. I pushed the divorce papers towards him again. Are you really going to divorce me? You bet your ass I am. Signed the divorce papers already. Oh, and I'm obviously taking custody of Jacob. He kept pleading, but realizing there was no way out, he finally started filling out the divorce papers. Later, I received a higher amount of alimony and child support than usual. A few months after divorcing Tim, I got a call from Sally. "This isn't what we agreed on," she yelled over the phone. I pretended not to know what she was talking about and barely containing my smirk. "Don't play dumb. The alimony." You said you'd forgive me if I sued Tim. Why are you asking me for it? I maintained my composure and replied, "I think you misunderstood what I said. I said I'd consider it. I never said I'd forgive you. That's not fair. Listen, lady, you took my husband. Adultery is a serious wrongdoing." You can't just commit such an act and expect to get away with it. Please forgive me. I don't have the money to pay the alimony. I thought it would be all over if I sued him. Her voice sounded desperate over the phone, but I pressed on. I won't accept I don't have money as an excuse. You took alimony from Tim, didn't you? You're going to pay me using that money, so be prepared. I hung up after saying that. I knew from the start that Sally was short on cash. 
If I demanded alimony without knowing her financial situation, she might escape responsibility. That's why I had her sue Tim first. In the end, she had to pay me an amount plus thirty thousand dollars she received from Tim. Everything went according to my plan. Tim sued Sally for setting him up, and she started claiming she did nothing wrong. It's been almost a year since I divorced Tim, and their messy legal battle is still going on. They're buried in debt from the alimony and constantly fighting. They got what they deserved. Meanwhile, I'm living a smooth life with Jacob at my parents' home. They happily welcomed us. I'm really grateful for the comfortable life we have at my parents. Jacob used to ask about his father, but not anymore. Though he might feel lonely at times, I want to fill his life with so much joy and fun that it outweighs any sadness.